So continuing our discussion about therapy for asthma class. In this video, we will talk about the map and the rastlazumab. So both of these medications are targeted therapies for asthma. And with targeted therapies, there is much less side effects, but they are more expensive. And in this video, we will talk about their mechanism of action, their pharmacokinetics, therapeutic uses, adverse effects, and contraindications. So let's start by talking about their mechanism of action. So the mopolizumab and the raslazumab are both humanized monoclonal antibodies. And a monoclonal antibody is an antibody that is derived from a cloned unique white blood cell and the last three letters in both of their names the mabolizumab the mab in here and the mab in the raslazumab are referring to the monoclonal antibody the m for monoclonal and the ab for antibody and both of these are recombinant so they are made by some type of dna recombination method and they both work by binding to the interleukin 5 and preventing it from binding to its receptor on the surface of the eosinophil. And this would lead to the inhibition of the signal of four eosinophils proliferation, activation, and survival in the bone marrow. And as you can see in this picture here, the mapolizumab and the raslazumab here, they both bind the interleukin-5 and prevent it from binding into the eosinophil here. So they would inhibit the interleukin-5 from binding to the eosinophil. And this would lead to inhibition of the signal for eosinophils proliferation, activation, and survival. Means the eosinophils would not proliferate and they would not activate and they would not survive in the bone marrow. And as you know, the eosinophils are heavily expressed in some types of asthma. It is called the eosinophilic asthma. So those medications are perfect for that disease because they bind the interleukin and they prevent the activation of the eosinophil leading to the relief of the eosinophilic asthma symptoms. Now let's talk about some important points in their pharmacokinetics. So the mopolizumab is available as subcutaneous only while the raslazumab is available as intravenous formula only. So the mopolizumab is given subcutaneously and the absorption with the subcutaneous route is slow for the mopolizumab and it reaches peak plasma concentration in four to eight days. So it requires around that to get absorbed from the subcutaneous tissue. And the mopolizumab is metabolized by the proteolytic enzymes with a half-life of 20 days. Now, the raslazumab, on the other hand, peak plasma concentration are reached after infusion because remember, the raslazumab is given intravenously, so it is injected directly into the circulation. So it would not need any time to get absorbed. And the raslazumab is metabolized by the proteolytic enzymes with a half-life of 24 days. Now let's talk about their therapeutic uses so the mopolizumab is FDA approved for treatment of severe asthma and high eosinophils levels at 150 cells per microliter or higher. And in patients with severe asthma and high eosinophils, the asthma is called eosinophilic asthma. So the mopolizumab is FDA approved for treatment of eosinophilic asthma at eosinophils of 150 cells per microliter or higher before treatment in patients aged 12 and older. The mopolizumab is also FDA approved for treatment of eosinophilic granulomatosis with bolangitis and for treatment of hyper eosinophilic syndrome. The raslazumab, on the other hand, is FDA approved for treatment of severe asthma and high eosinophils levels at 400 cells per microliter. So it is approved for treatment of eosinophilic asthma 
with eosinophils at 400 or greater before treatment with at least one asthma exacerbation in the previous year in patients aged 18 and older. Moving on to talk about the adverse effects. So both of these medications are targeted therapy, as we mentioned, that is why it is considered to have an excellent safety profile. Now the mopalizumab side effects include injection side reactions, hypersensitivity reactions, and it may lead to headache, back pain, abdominal pain, and muscle spasms, and it may also lead to fatigue, and it may lead to some infections like influenza or urinary tract infection, because remember, it messes with immunity, so it may lead to infections, and it may also lead to pruritus or eczema, which are immune-related conditions. The raslazumab, on the other hand, may lead to elevated creatine phosphokinase levels, or it may lead to oropharyngeal pain, muscle pain, and it may lead to hypersensitivity reactions, and finally, it may lead to malignancy. Now, the malignancy is very rare, and the reason behind it is that it also occurs because of the changes in body immunity. Finally, let's talk about the contraindications. So, both of these medications, the mopalizumab and the raslazumab, are contraindicated in case of previous hypersensitivity reactions to them. And the patient must be closely observed for several hours after mepolizumab or lastozumab administration due to the risk of for anaphylaxis. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like, comment your ideas and questions, and subscribe. And this video is a part of a bigger class. It's called Therapy for Asthma Masterclass. Check it out. Link will be in the description of this video.